Number 8. Marie Crabtree A woman from Gold Coast, Australia, faced criminal charges in connection to the suspicious deaths of her teenage daughter and adult son, which had occurred in 2012 and 2017 respectively. The mother, alleged to have been involved in her children's killings, was Marie Crabtree, whose atrocious actions were described extensively during a committal hearing at Brisbane Magistrates Court in March of 2021. Crabtree, who had reportedly been charged with murder, attempted murder, torture, and fraud, was accused of repeatedly giving her children various prescription drugs that proved detrimental to their health and development. She'd allegedly given her son Jonathan, who was 26 at the time of his passing, smoothies laced with opioids on more than one occasion. An unidentified woman who claimed to have witnessed Crabtree's crimes firsthand told the court that the mother had administered dangerously high doses of pain medication that ultimately resulted in both of her children's deaths. The female witness reportedly served as a lookout while Crabtree concocted Jonathan's lethal smoothie and she later recounted in court how she'd listened to the man make pained noises for nine hours as he overdosed. It was initially thought that both Jonathan and his sister Erin had taken their own lives but Crabtree was ultimately identified as the culprit. Number 7. Erin Garcia in September of 2021, an eight-year-old girl was dragged alongside a moving vehicle for 300 feet as she attempted to stop her inebriated mother from driving. According to law enforcement in Placentia, California, Erin Garcia, aged 44, had gotten behind the wheel of her SUV in defiance of her concerned daughter's protest that she was too drunk to drive. At about 11.30 p.m., Garcia's daughter clutched the handle to the passenger side door to keep her mother from driving away. A male bystander also reportedly grabbed onto the vehicle, but Garcia accelerated nonetheless, pulling the man and her young daughter down the road for a distance nearly equivalent to the length of a football field. Police officers descended on Garcia's residence a short while later, at which point they found the intoxicated suspect hiding behind some bushes in the backyard. The woman allegedly kicked the officers as they attempted to take her into custody, but she was eventually brought to the station without further incident. Garcia ultimately faced charges of assault with a deadly weapon, child endangerment, and battery against a police officer. Both her daughter and the male bystander were taken to a nearby hospital with what were described as moderate injuries. Number 6. Courtney Reschk in 2012, an Idaho woman was taken into police custody after reports surfaced that she'd engaged in intimate relations with multiple teenagers to whom she'd been acquainted through her oldest son. Upon investigating the woman's predatory behavior, the authorities discovered that Courtney Reschk, aged 35, had plied her victims with alcohol before having intercourse with them in her Kuna home. According to the arrest report, the woman's other son, aged 5, had at one point attempted to enter her bedroom during a rendezvous with one of the several teenage boys she was accused of victimizing. The child was unable to open the locked door, however, and Reshk allegedly ignored his cries for help, instead opting to continue having relations with her elder son's friend. The mother of two was ultimately charged with 11 felony counts and an additional seven misdemeanor counts, which included dispensing alcohol to minors. In June of 2013, Reshk was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison with the possibility of parole after 36 months. Number 5. Amber Stevenson In June of 2015, a brawl broke out between 34-year-old Amber Stevenson and Rebecca Mills, aged 39, at a Walmart in Beach Grove, Indiana. According to eyewitnesses, Stevenson had instigated the physical encounter at about 10 p.m. and had even encouraged her six-year-old son to aid her in her efforts of besting Mills during the fight. While speaking about the incident on a local radio program called The Smiley Morning Show, Stevenson claimed to have heard the other female shopper use a racial slur when referring to a store employee outraged she subsequently confronted Mills about her offensive language and a physical altercation ensued in the middle of the shampoo aisle. A bystander then took out his cell phone and began filming the two women as they fought. 
Concerned witnesses pleaded with them to stop as Stevenson's young son looked on while being in close proximity to the skirmish. As was shown in the video recording, Stevenson ultimately called upon her son for assistance after Mills had successfully pinned her to the ground. The boy proceeded to strike Mills several times and also threw shampoo bottles in her direction in an attempt to aid his mother. Beach Grove police were eventually called to the store but no charges were issued at the scene to either of the women involved. One witness claimed to have observed responding officers laughing upon being shown the recording of the brawl. The employee whom Mills had addressed in the moments leading up to the fight denied that the woman had called her a racial epitaph. Following an investigation by local authorities, Stevenson was arrested and charged with neglecting a dependent and contributing to the delinquency of a minor in relation to her son's involvement in the fight. Number 4. Edith Riddle A Florida woman named Edith Riddle was arrested on child abuse charges after she'd allegedly beaten up her daughter's school rival on March the 18th of 2021. According to First Coast News, Riddle was wearing a boxing glove at the time of the attack. She claimed to have accidentally superglued the piece of fighting equipment to her wrist and was therefore unable to remove it. The police report detailed how the 34-year-old Jacksonville resident had just concluded a meeting with the vice principal of DuPont Middle School in the moments that preceded the attack. Riddle and her daughter were making their way off of school grounds when they confronted the victim outside the cafeteria. The woman's daughter initiated the physical altercation by pushing the young girl, who was described as the child's rival, and punching her repeatedly as she was lying on the ground. Riddle allegedly delivered several blows to the victim as well, bludgeoning the defenseless girl with the boxing glove. A teacher who'd witnessed the fight reportedly made a frantic announcement over the loudspeaker at 12.14 p.m. Shortly thereafter, a school safety officer arrived at the scene and broke up the altercation. Riddle, who was subsequently dubbed Boxing Glove Mum by the media, was taken into custody by Duval School Board Police. Number 3. Gulzar Banu In September of 2021, a woman from Karnataka, India, was accused of murdering her own daughter in an effort to conceal the details of her extramarital affair. On the 5th of the month, local police recovered the body of Parvina Banu, aged 28, which they'd found in a dry well from a small village close to where the family lived. Although the authorities initially hypothesized that the woman had taken her own life, a post-mortem examination of Parvina's remains indicated that she'd been strangled to death. Investigators reviewed the victim's cell phone records, whereupon they discovered that she'd been in contact with her mother, Gulza, and uncle, Paya Rejin, shortly before her death. Upon being pressed by detectives, both Gulza and Paya Rejin confessed to have carried out Parvina's murder on September the 4th. According to the police superintendent of the Chikabalapura district, Parvina had recently learned that her mother and uncle were having an affair. The pair thus plotted to kill the young woman in order to keep their relationship a secret from Gulzar's husband, Fias. Payarejin had allegedly been the one to perpetrate the killing, which involved him strangling Parvina with a jacket. Gulzar successfully made her husband an accomplice after convincing him that she'd murdered their daughter for marrying a man from a different religion. Fias helped the two killers transport Parvina's body to the well where she was later found by the police. All three of the victim's relatives were arrested and charged in connection to the murder. Today's topic was requested by Instagram follower Ariane Garrow. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below or follow us on Instagram and reach out to us there. Number 2. Marsha Edwards A 58-year-old Georgia woman murdered her two adult children before taking her own life. In August of 2019, Marsha Edwards had owned and operated a medical supply equipment company in Atlanta for several years before her death. The Edwards family had long been regarded as a pillar of their local community in the suburb of Vinings. Prior to the sudden and violent change in her character, Edwards had reportedly established herself as a well-connected socialite and by all accounts had been beloved by many of those who knew her. It was reported that her ex-husband, a prominent Atlanta surgeon, had gone to dinner with their daughter Erin, aged 20, the night before the tragedy. 
The grieving man would later tell investigators that during the course of the final evening he shared with his daughter, there had been no indications that the young woman suspected herself to be in any kind of danger. On the day of the incident, Edwards had uploaded images of herself and her kids to Instagram, stated in the caption of the post that she could not ask for better children. The bodies of the three of them were ultimately found in the family's residence by Cobb County police officers at about 6 p.m. on August the 21st. The autopsy subsequently performed by the county coroner determined that Edwards had shot her 24-year-old son, Chris, a total of five times, while Erin had suffered three gunshot wounds of her own. After carrying out her children's murders, Edwards reportedly fired a single fatal round into her chest. The horrific incident shocked the community, but the motive for Edwards' actions remains unclear. Number 1. Donna Scrivo A 61-year-old Michigan woman murdered and dismembered her adult son in January of 2014. During the criminal trial that followed, the gruesome incident. The accused mother, Donna Scrivo, attempted to convince the jury that she'd been an innocent victim in the situation. Her defense attorney claimed that she'd been held hostage by an unidentified masked intruder. According to Scrivo's testimony, the supposed assailant had imprisoned her for a total of five days in her St. Clair Shores home. During that time frame, the intruder allegedly strangled the woman's 32-year-old son Ramsey Scrivo before mutilating the man's corpse. The defendant's version of the circumstances surrounding her son's death was firmly rejected by the jury assigned to her case. Scrivo was ultimately convicted of first-degree murder and other related charges. One of the crucial pieces of evidence that the prosecution had focused its attention on during the trial was a buzzsaw that Scrivo had allegedly purchased from a home improvement store. Investigators had established that the same saw had been used to cut up Ramsey's dead body. The dismembered portions were then placed in several trash bags and left on the side of the road at four separate locations. CCTV footage had captured Scrivo near the area where her son's discarded body parts were later found. Scrivo, who was a registered nurse, had also been Ramsey's certified caretaker as the man reportedly suffered from a mental illness that left him unable to care for himself. His mother had allegedly tranquilized him with a dosage of Xanax before she strangled him to death and mutilated his remains. Thanks for watching. Would you slap your mum in public for $50,000? Let us know in the comments section below.